Hi everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez with the Weekly Report, your look at news from the City of Kansas City, Missouri. This week I'm reporting in Seattle, where several members of city staff are attending a conference where we are learning and sharing best practices for city government. And we're preparing to host this conference in Kansas City next year when we will welcome more than 4,000 people from around the country. Meanwhile, back at home, plenty of news going on. Have you ever wanted to adopt a pet from the city's animal shelter, but you're not quite sure whether the shelter has the exact type of dog or cat that you're looking for? We have a new tool that can help. The Kansas City Pet Project, which manages the city's animal shelter, has debuted a new pet alert tool. It's an online way to help you find your new best friend by automatically emailing you when a pet matching your desired criteria is available. If you don't see the pet you're looking for among the cats and dogs currently available for adoption, fill out the form at kcpetproject.org with your contact information to sign up. It's that easy. You can sign up for as many searches as you would like, and you can cancel at any time. Remember, pets are available for adoption on a first-come, first-served basis. The Pet Alert tool automatically emails you when that pet is available, but it does not reserve that pet for you. The annual Guns and Hoses boxing match featuring local police officers and firefighters will be held on November 14th at the Kansas City Convention Center Grand Ballroom beginning at 7 p.m. The Kansas City Guns and Hoses is sponsored by the Kansas City Crime Commission and raises funds for the SAFE program. This organization supports the spouses and families of fallen police, firefighters, and EMTs who lose their lives in the line of duty. To date, this important organization has helped 11 families through crisis. For tickets or to purchase a table or become a sponsor, call the Kansas City Crime Commission at 816-960-6800. For general admission tickets, visit Ticketmaster.com. Due to construction, residents who need to visit municipal court to pay tickets or attend court must use the south doors located near the KCPD police headquarters. The construction process has also temporarily altered the security process and will temporarily require everyone, including those paying tickets, to pass through security. The construction should not affect the public at all. Uh, the main difference is oh, the front entrance. They do have to be routed down to the south, but we have signs that will direct the public uh, to the south entrance. For the construction updates, visit kcmo.gov slash court slash construction. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. Hi, my name's Alex Hamill. Uh, it's my privilege to be uh, this year's Brush Creek Art Walk coordinator. Uh, the Brush Creek Art Walk, this is our fourth year. We're working uh, cooperation with the Kansas City Parks Department. Uh, and we're at the, currently at the Anita B. Gorman Discovery Center. Uh, we're hosting a reception on, um, let's see, it's Tuesday, October 6th, uh, from 5 to 8 p.m., where we'll have our top 50 paintings from this event. It's a weekend event, a uh, three-day uh, weekend event starting yesterday, Friday, today being Saturday, and tomorrow uh, we'll be wrapping at Tice Park. Yeah, there's been degrees. Yeah. Right? But you know, it just kind of goes with it. And just how the trees are in the shadow across the I would have to do a lot more detail on the buildings, and I don't really want to do that. I want them to just kind of fade away. So. We have approximately 53 signed up right now that ultimately will have 46 to 50 participating artists before this weekend is over. So come on down, um, certainly love to see you there. Uh, once again, reception, Anita B. Gorman Discovery Center, 4750 Troost from 5 to 8 p.m. Tuesday, October 6th. Thank you so much.
In grade school, we learned red means stop and green means go. But what goes into maintaining 600 traffic signals every year? I'm Katrina Parker, and I'm gonna give you an inside look at the Kansas City, Missouri Public Works Department in action. Come on, let's go. Take a look at how the city brings it all together. The city plays an active part in designing traffic flows for current neighborhoods and new developments. Our traffic engineers receive and analyze traffic study data. They also respond to 311 Action Center requests for things like traffic calming devices, parking changes, stop or yield sign requests, and speed limit signs. Sophisticated computer modeling allows our traffic engineers to figure out street configurations and forecasting well into the future. Uh, when a developer comes in uh, with a request to develop a property, um, we would review the plans, review the, uh, his proposals, make sure that it's safe, make sure that the uh, street infrastructure can safely carry the volumes that are needed for, to serve that, serve that development, and that it wouldn't have any negative impact on uh, our neighborhoods and uh, on the traveling public in general. The city determines which improvements need to be made for the developers to proceed. Long-range models can show city planners how to size future streets for neighborhoods and communities. You've probably been sitting at the traffic light at one time or another wondering when the signal was going to change. Usually it's just our impatience getting the best of us, but sometimes there is actually something wrong with the signal. Our signal timing section can pinpoint with great accuracy when a signal is experiencing a malfunction. Staff in the Traffic Operations Center evaluate signal timing effectiveness by remote using a system of overhead cameras and a central control system. This highly complex camera system helps staff get signals back online in a flash. Primarily what we're looking for is, uh, you know, if we see any uh, issues, we try to manage it more proactively than being reactive. In the past, uh, we used to wait for someone to call it in, you know, because we have about 624 signals. You know, we can't be at every signal every time, so we are waiting on uh, citizens to call in and report a problem. Now we can actually monitor about 400 of those signals, 402 of those signals, and say and tell if the detection is working properly or not, and if the signal is in flash or not, and we can dispatch people to get that taken care of before someone actually calls it in. Traffic engineers can use the camera system to reduce the amount of time the signal is in flash and malfunctioning. The camera system uses 54 miles of fiber optic cable, which helps staff address problems from the Traffic Operations Center. For example, if a citizen feels a signal in their neighborhood is not staying on green long enough, they can pick up the phone. Uh, typically what happens is that they, uh, they will uh, call 311 Action Center and uh, they will send a complaint in. And then once we get the complaint, uh, if, it's on, if it's on the system and we can actually see what's going on, we have the capability to go back and see what, what went on in the last uh, month or two. If the wait time is about 20 to 30 seconds, that's likely how the signal was designed. But if it's more than a couple of minutes, city staff goes out to check the signal if it can't be evaluated by the overhead camera system. If there are any adjustments needed, staff will make those adjustments. And citizens are taking notice. In a recent citizen satisfaction survey, a majority of residents reported being satisfied with the city's maintenance of signs and signals. If you have a street sign or traffic signal issue, the best way to get the city on the case is to call 311 and report the problem. Until next time, I'm Petrina Parker with the City of Kansas City, Missouri's Public Works Department. I'm Laura Ish, I'm the Water Quality Educator for the Kansas City Water Services Department and we're here today at the Royals game playing Stormwater Plinko to help teach kids and adults that storm drains lead to creek streams and rivers in most of Kansas City and in most of the nation. So here today they're trying to get their trash into either the recycle bin or the trash can in our Plinko game so that they can keep from polluting our rivers. We're also out here promoting our street sweepers because Clean streets equal clean storm drains, which equal less flooding and cleaner rivers and better water quality.
The thing about Tech Week that's really nice is you get to find people who are just like us, who don't have any grounding, and then you have other people who have taken their product and elevated it. And a lot of people like to share their stories. And a lot of people are giving me their card, told me that I can contact them after the fact. You know, it's it's something that you kind of can't get offline. Like you can Google anything, but you can't really Google experience that somebody else has had. And that's really awesome. Uh, I've never heard about it before. This is my first time in the States. Um, my knowledge about the States was, uh, and in particular about the startup scene was, you know, Silicon Valley, maybe New York. Kansas City does have an amazing amount of talent here um, and support for people to come from the coast here. It's getting together, brilliant minds, supporting each other, and letting the nation know that we are uh, a tech force to be reckoned with here in Kansas City. Being green is an important goal for the city of Kansas City. The city council has even made it one of their top council priorities, but turning a 1993 maintenance facility into a LEED certified facility seemed like a lofty goal when it was proposed. There's a liquid that goes down into the ground and comes back up into the heat pumps, and it's an exchange system. So uh, it brings heat out of the ground and takes that into the heat pumps and sends that out into the building. In 2013, the Aviation Department began work on converting the 154 Tokyo building into a more organized facility with improved locker rooms, a larger break room, space for 11 new offices, a new conference room, and better designed shop spaces for the staff. We used um, insulated translucent panels. These panels allow light into the building, into the offices and shops. In order to provide natural light into the interior office spaces, solar tube interior skylights were installed. These tubes have dimmers so that occupants can control the lighting levels. A new HVAC system that utilizes the geothermal heating and cooling was also installed. It was the first system of this type installed by any aviation facility. This system provides heating and cooling to the offices, break room and locker room areas, and additional heating to the shop areas. In the bathrooms, we used uh, recycled plastic partitions. Resinous flooring uh, does contain recycled material in it as well. In February 2014, the 154 Tokyo project was certified LEED Silver and has now been recognized as a top performing LEEDS building by the US GBC Central Plains region. It won an award and it's one of the top 10 performing buildings for 2014 and 2015. Residents and art enthusiasts of all ages are invited to experience Art in the Square at Washington Square Park now through December 21st. This initiative showcases public art while reinforcing the city's commitment to investing in local artists. For more information, visit kcmo.gov and search for Art in the Square. To view this program again or any other Channel 2 videos, go to kcmo.gov and search Channel 2. That page has a link to our YouTube channel and a Channel 2 program guide. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. Have a great week. I'm Chris Hernandez.